let me uh, use the last few minutes to talk about what we would like to see in terms of being able to redefine the way we see capitalism. And Madhav Chavan, let me ask you this in the context of, uh, you know, we need money to invest in education and health care. Uh, we've been talking about this collaborative arrangement between governments, whether it's state level or the central level, as well as the private sector. Uh, philanthropy has its part to play, but if I were to ask you about redefining the idea of capitalism to make it work for everybody, what is it that you would like to see change in India? in your experience of having worked in these sectors? A dose of socialism won't be too bad. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's all about, uh, it's, it's not only about wealth creation, it's also about distribution. That's what we are saying. And if you don't focus on that, I think we were too busy making money. And when you do all that, then you forget that you have to do something with that money. Uh, whether it's private pockets, uh, CSR today, Rohini and Nandan Nilekani have yeah. declared that they're going pledge, to give yeah. away their half their wealth. People are doing that. Uh, but it's not about charity. It is, you have to look at these public services, public goods as an investment and go after them. I don't think we have that. I think our focus has been entirely, like much of this discussion, entirely on business and its growth. I think we need to have a lot of focus on how uh, education is going to change. How do we learn? I mean, all this globalization and that, well, our globalization, yeah. Indian companies going out and doing global things, there's a lot that we can learn here, this innovation. Yeah. What happens is you try to solve your own problems and you learn a lot. Yeah. Like we learned a lot and what we learned in trying to solve Indian problems, we came up with indigenous solutions sure. and those were attractive to the world. And this is happening to many Indian organizations. There's a group called uh, Design for Change. Yeah. They are in 66 countries because their solution is attractive, but not many people recognize it. So I think there are a lot of groups that are doing this, even in the social sector. I yeah. think we have to focus on what our problem is and not necessarily borrow. People tell me, don't reinvent the wheel. But yeah. I, I, I keep saying the path to progress and development is different in different countries. Mm. So you might have to reinvent the path. Why not? Dominique Barton, let me uh, start by getting wrap-up comments from you. As you look at your dashboard today, uh, and let's, let's leave India uh, outside for a little bit, what is the one big global challenge that you would be most concerned about that could impact India? And what is the one big opportunity that you would be most excited about that Indian companies should also focus on? It's hard to pick one on either of those, but I, I would, and I'm an optimist. I think there's, there's, I think the big thing is there's so much change. So, my, the, the big thing I worry about is jobs, is because we've got to be able to ensure that people have jobs in a world that's moving faster and faster. I think we can do it, but it's going to take private sector and social sector innovation because the systems aren't there. And if we don't, in a world where one, one person can create a humongous amount of wealth, yeah. you're, going to, you're going to create a lot of instability. You know, it's not trade, I think it's going to be more technology. So getting that right is going to be important. On the other hand, the flip side, I'm so excited by digitization and technology because it's going to enable hundreds of millions of people to be able to get access to information, to education, to jobs, to markets and so forth. So, this, it, it, there's the challenge on the jobs, but there's the opportunity, and I think especially in this country, to enable hundreds of millions of people to have access uh, to education, to information, uh, and then the ability to get jobs, uh, which is going to help make this, uh, make this such an amazing growth country. Madhav Chavan, the one thing that, uh, that you're most confident about and the one risk that you would, would be watching out for, what's on your dashboard today? I believe in people, and I think people find uh, a solution. Sometimes the path is not easy, uh, as, as no path is, but I believe in Indian people. They, they, uh, we do tend to find, uh, not that other people don't, but Indians are particularly good at finding, and so we will find, that, uh, that I'm very, very sure of. The risk is that we uh, take the risks lightly, we should not. And you may uh, ignore some you know, red lights, and we should not do that. And the early signs are already there. There are all these reservation kind of uh, yep. agitations going on. What are they saying? That needs to be looked into and have to be addressed beyond 
the, the political of, alliances. Yeah. That's, that's, that's different. Equitable distribution. There is, there is a yeah. lot more happening at the bottom, and we need to do something about that. Okay, equitable distribution needs to be something that is talked about, addressed, uh, and, uh, and part of, of public discourse. Uh, Rajneesh Kumar, big opportunity, big risk. Yes, opportunity is big, but my biggest worry is that we are heavily underinvested when it comes to physical and social infrastructure in this country. The population is growing, but the growth in infrastructure is not keeping pace. And that is a big drag on the Indian economy, and it is pulling it back. Opportunity is, of course, uh, all of us know that if we can grow at even 6, 6.5, 7%, yes. For anyone and everyone, there is a huge opportunity for growth, be it the provider of goods or be it the provider of services. Okay, so the infrastructure deficit and the social uh, deficits that need to be addressed in order for us to be able to grow. Chandra. I think the uh, challenge is we have a shortage of everything. We have a shortage of uh, infrastructure, shortage of skills, number of doctors, teachers, lawyers, everything, everything we have a shortage. And we also have to create 100 million jobs. The opportunity is to solve the problem by defining the future of jobs so that we create those jobs that address these challenges. Mr. Kotek? Opportunity, I think, is that I'll be bolder and say that we have an opportunity to grow at 9%. The capability is there. I think we really need to, the biggest enemies are we Indians ourselves for our growth. And therefore, we have to find a way of really getting to 8 to 9 percent growth. I think that is the opportunity. On the risks, it is a civil society uh, issue. And I will give an example. Two most important pillars of civil society are teachers and judges. Best of talent does not want to go there today. Mm. And I will believe that India has truly progressed and developed when best of talent wants to become a teacher and the best of lawyers want to become judges. That is the day I will say India has truly arrived. Well, we, we will wait for that to happen. We do hope that that does indeed happen. Uh, last poll here for the audience. Uh, uh, Five trillion dollar economy by 2025. Those who think that India is going to get there, the green flag, and those who believe that it's uh, challenging. Well, the eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's a great note to end this conversation on, where we talked about India and the world. Uday Kodak, N. Chandrasekhar, and Rajneesh Kumar, Madhav Chavan, Dominique Barton. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for being a great audience today. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks very much indeed.